Hey there, Stafford Crossing family and friends. Welcome to this week's update, the week of Sunday, April the 12th. And thank you for joining us. And we look forward to sharing you some exciting news that's on the horizon. That's right. We had a really great weekend this past weekend celebrating uh, the resurrection on Sunday and Good Friday on Friday. Uh, we were just thrilled at the number of people who participated throughout the weekend. Uh, we had hundreds of folks on uh, participate on Good Friday as they were tuning in to uh, commemorate, to remember, and to celebrate Jesus's sacrificial death for us on the cross. And I know the team that, that helped put that together was just so grateful for the opportunity to serve and thrilled at the, uh, the response to that. Uh, and just a big kudos to you, church, for the way you invited others to participate and to, to be a part of our Easter celebration on Sunday. Again, we just had a really great crowd tune in. And, uh, and we're so grateful for that as the message of Jesus and the good news of the resurrection and the fact how, how, how Jesus overcomes our fears and how we fight fear uh, because of our hope in Jesus um, is the powerful message. And, and that got out there uh, to people that need to hear that. And we know that you will continue to follow up with those friends and family members uh, and that you'll continue to benefit from, from that good news of, of Jesus Jesus' resurrection and hope as well. You know, along the way, we have been trying to pray through what to continue to add and during this time of social distancing and not being able to gather together. You can't replace in person, but we're wanting to layer in this week two additional experiences, if you will, for our family and friends here at Stafford Crossing. So we're doing these updates every Tuesday right now. And on Wednesday, we're going to cease publication of The Connection, and we're instead going to offer a Zoom prayer time. And so you'll be getting information about that and a link uh, within, within this email that will share with you how to log into Zoom. And there's two opportunities, at noon on Wednesday and at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Each of them will be a 30-minute slot. You'll have a host that will be there to guide you through a prayer time. Again, trying to figure out ways to engage our hearts in the heart of God during a time of uncertainty and change. That is one additional opportunity this week, gathering for prayer. A second opportunity is gonna be coming out on Thursday. Our band is gonna be putting out a devotion and a worship song, and that'll be coming out in an on-demand feature to be coming out in an email, and you can watch it at your leisure. And just to make certain, again, that our hearts are drawn to community, our hearts are drawn to one another, but most importantly, they're drawn to God. So be sure you take advantage of these new opportunities to grow our hearts during this time and during this season. So you know already that, that plans are constantly changing uh, because of the different restrictions and, and everything that's going on. Well, one event that we have done in the past called Secret Church, where we have hosted a gathering here. Uh, it's usually very late on a Friday night kind of scenario. Um, that gathering cannot happen. Uh, and so the Secret Church organization has uh, shifted gears and given permission for churches to, you know, to, to give out the login credentials for the stream, the live stream, and, and it'll happen in homes rather than, you know, people coming to the church. And so on April 24th, you will have the opportunity to, to log in and access the live stream of the Secret Church event uh, and participate in that in your home. And now the Secret Church, if you're not familiar with that, is an event that focuses on two things. One, it's biblical teaching on a different topic each year, uh, partnered with a focus and an emphasis on the persecuted, the underground church somewhere in the world. And so they highlight a different region or country in the world, and there's prayer and there's information about that persecuted church uh, in that region. And so you can be a part of that on April 24th, that's a Friday, and we'll put a link in, in this email as well uh, on how to access that and how to contact Mark DeCourcy uh, to get those credentials so you can be a part of Secret Church on April 24th. That's going to be awesome. Thanks, Dave. Hey, I'm going to wrap up with a devotional thought. You know, I believe every single person in our community really in the world has been impacted by COVID-19. I just think about some people that are in my world right now. I think about my buddy Brad Smith, who's a part of our church, who passed away on March 18th. 
Connie, his wife, has yet to be able to celebrate his life. And that's sort of on hold, that closure. The same thing happened to one of our elders, Ron Palmer, whose father passed away on the 21st of March. Still uh, is in Georgia and unable to go there and to celebrate his dad's life. It's difficult, it's hard. I'm working with two couples right now for weddings and trying to figure out if and how that can happen with 10 and less and social distancing and, and not being able to get a marriage license because the courthouse is closed. All of these dynamics are diverse, they're changing. Think about a guy, young guy, I coached in high school basketball who went on to play college baseball. I didn't get to have his senior year this year, didn't get to graduate, didn't get to finish with his buddies. His sister's a high school senior, plays softball, didn't get to have her season or prom or graduation. All of these things are changing. So how are we gonna manage it? How are we gonna deal with it? This past week, I read a story about uh, a rancher out west, and he talked about the difference between buffaloes and cows when it comes to facing a storm. He says he notices out there in the big, massive areas when a cow begins or sees a storm, that cow begins to run away from the storm, but the storm is faster than a slow moving cow. And what happens is the cow ends up being in the storm longer because it ends up running with the storm. Contrast that to buffaloes. Buffaloes, when they see a storm coming, they run into the storm. And by default, they end up being in the storm for a shorter period of time. And he went on to make this brilliant comment, hey, we need to be more like buffaloes instead of cows when we come to a storm. And I'm going like, that sounds like some pipe psychology, maybe, a, um, I don't know what kind of thinking it is, some feel good thinking. But here's the deal. Um, we don't need to think like a cow or a buffalo. We need to think like the heart of Jesus would want us to think. And here are some words, I think, that direct us on how to respond to this storm from the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, read it all. I'm going to look at four verses, uh, verses 8, 14, 16, and 18. Here's what Paul writes. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed perplexed, but not in despair. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. Therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, on not what is seen, but what on is unseen. So friends, let me just encourage us all to keep our hearts drawn to Jesus. I am hopeful that that's what our new Wednesday prayer time and our new Thursday um, devotion and worship song will help us to draw our hearts toward Jesus on that which is unseen so that we can navigate these waters of uncertainty in which we find ourselves now. Hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer to wrap up. God, thank you so much for your love, for your presence, your power, the hope that's in Jesus. Draw our hearts toward you as we continue to navigate this reality we find ourselves in. We know that you are our hope. You are our Savior, and it's in you that we trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week.